Welcome to the quiz show that demands nothing less than perfection. Behind this screen are four contestants will be hoping their knowledge is flawless because one single mistake could give the game away. This is perfection. Hello and welcome to Perfection, the quiz show where only perfect play is good enough. Behind me are the contestants. We call them the usual suspects. They're in our isolation room. In a moment, we'll find out which one of them has been randomly selected to join me here to play Perfection. They will then face a series of true or false statements. For example, if I said a sorority is an organisation composed of women, would you say that that's true or false? Well, if you'd said true, I can tell you you'd be right. Answering true or false might seem easy, but if the contestant gets a single answer wrong, their opponents, the usual suspects, will be allowed into the game to capitalise on their mistakes. So you know how the game works. Let's meet the usual suspects. Hi, I'm Catherine and I'm from Bristol. I work in a finance department for an insurance company and I'm really excited to be playing my first game. Hi, I'm Phil from Warsaw. I'm a business intelligence developer and this is my first game. Hi, I'm Judy. I'm from Lansing in West Sussex. I'm a semi-retired supply teacher and this is my third game. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm from Manchester. I'm an office coordinator and this is my third game. Best of luck to you all as we now find out which one of you has been randomly picked to play perfection. <laughs> Judy, it's you. Please come down and play. <laughs> Judy, welcome to the show. Um, you're a bit Thank of a you. fan of the show. You watch it at home? Oh, yes, yes. You watch it with somebody normally? My grandson, Zach, yeah. Yeah. But how old is Zach? Ten. Is he? Who does better in the rounds? I'd say 50-50, really. Because really? it is 50-50, isn't it? You yeah, well, know? it is, yeah. 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 So he just always... likes to be able to say true or false, you know. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. there's always something nice to do yeah. with the grandchild, isn't it, as it well? Is, yeah. An important birthday coming up. Are we yeah. allowed to talk about that or oh. are we not? No, yes, to... yes. Go ahead. No, well, <laughs> your 50th? No. 60th. Is it? Yeah. No. Yeah. Can't be. It is. Surely. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a big party. Are you planning a big party? Uh, n well, if I should win some money, um, we'd like to go on safari. That's what we're going to use the money for. Oh, OK. Um, so, for the actual birthday, I want to go to um, Sallington Warren, which is a nice walk in Storrington near us. Um, and I just want to get all my family there for a picnic. Well, Judy, it's now you versus the usual suspects. They yeah. were your teammates. Yeah. They're now your enemies. Their job is to stop you from winning the prize fund because your failure will mean the prize money rolls over to the next game where one of them could be down here playing for a bigger total. Now, every game on Perfection is worth £1,000. Here's the great news for you. No one has won in the last 17 games. So the prize fund currently stands at £18,000. <laughs> That's a big picnic. That is a big picnic. Uh, yeah. That's a safari. And my kitchen. And your kitchen. Yeah. That's the plan, is it? Yeah. Well, best of luck. Here's how the game works. You'll play three rounds, then a final. Every yeah. round that you achieve perfection will make the final easier for you. However, if your performance is anything less than perfect, the usual suspects here will have a chance to step in and steal the round, making it that much harder for you. Usual suspects are going to switch you off for now so you can't see or hear anything. And away they go. Each round consists of four true or false statements. You'll be answering against the clock. You'll only have 45 seconds. And once you've given an answer, your first answer, it will be locked in. Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's get started and play perfection. <laughs> round one, your 45 seconds start now. Lausanne is a city in Switzerland. True. True. The darts player Phil Taylor is nicknamed Silverback. False. False. J.D. Salinger never finished the catcher in the rye. False. False. And finally, Sean Pertwee played the doctor in Doctor Who. False. False. And with lots of time to spare, you've answered all four statements. Not much of a one for giving much away about what you're thinking. Well, you either know it or you don't, don't you? Uh, and do you know them all? Not absolutely certain, but not, not, they're not bad questions. So you think you're in with a chance yeah, of perfection? Yeah, maybe. All in right, chance. before we reveal yeah. exactly how well you've done, it's time to bring back the usual suspects. So here are the four statements, and next to them are Judy's answers. Michael, kick us off here. Has she achieved perfection? I don't think she has. I've got a sneaky feeling that C is wrong. All right, Phil, can you see any holes in these uh, arguments? It um, looks a pretty good round to me. I think the only one that I'm unsure on is A, to be honest. A. And by the way, can I congratulate you? It's very rare you see a, a full quality sideboard these days, as they say. <laughs> that's, a, that's a quality pair of mutton tops there, isn't it? <laughs> Thank very you good. very much. Indeed. OK, Catherine, what do you make of these answers? 
I don't know much about darts, so that's the only one I'd be unsure about is B. B. All right, well, Judy, the moment of truth, you need to have answered all four statements perfectly to have won the round. Let's find out how many are correct. Congratulations, Judy, you have achieved perfection. All right, let's have a look at those answers in more detail. Lucanne is a city in Switzerland. You said that was true, and of course it is true. The darts player, Phil Taylor, is nicknamed Silverback. You said that's false, and of course it is false. He's Phil the Power Taylor, he's known as, yeah. JD Salinger never finished the catcher in the rye. You said that was false, and it is false. He did. 1951, he finished it in. And Sean Pertwee played the Doctor in Doctor Who. You said that was false, and it is false because... It's John Pertwee. His dad, John Pertwee, actually played Doctor Who. Quite right, too. Judy, as a result of that perfect performance, you've made winning the prize fund a lot easier. Here's your final board appearing before you. These six blank spaces need to be filled with subject categories. Here are your final round category options, starting with Daft Punk, running through models, art and onto poetry, with many more in between. And because you won the round, you've earned the right to choose two categories to add to the board. If the usual suspects are one, they'd be adding two categories, trying to make things difficult for you. But it's your honour. Right, I'll have animals. Animals goes into the final. Um, models. And models. Well, you your suspects. You didn't really get a look in there, did you? No. No. Well, we'll see you again in round two. Right, now they've gone and they can't hear us, we can have a little chat about that. Which are the two that you'd quite like to avoid on that list? Well, Ivy League. Mm-hmm. And internet. And the next two you'll be choosing? Maybe first ladies and possibly film villains. OK, Judy. You've made a great start to the game. Right. Ready to carry on? Yes. Then let's play round two. <laughs> Your 45 seconds start now. There are 13 months in a leap year. False. False. Norman Mailer founded the US Postal Service. False. False. The golfer Ernie Els is nicknamed the Big Easy. True. True. And finally, the film World War Z is based on a true story. False. False. And with plenty of time left, you've answered all four statements. Again, some people say, well, it might be, it might not. I'm thinking maybe yes. Uh, you're, you're definitely a false or true. That's it. Mm, yeah. Well, well, yeah, I mean, you either know it or you don't. No, you know, quite right. I mean... As you said first time. All right, I'll stop asking. Before we reveal how well you've done, it's time for us to bring back the usual suspects. So, usual suspects, these are the four statements, and next to them are Judy's answers. What do you reckon is going on here, Phil? Um, looks pretty good. Um, I've got a feeling in the back of my mind, in 1963, there was a zombie apocalypse. So I think D is actually wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point, Phil. Uh, Catherine? Uh, Judy, I think you've done really well again. Um, I don't know much about golf, so if C would be the one that I wouldn't be too sure about. Michael, what do you think? I think, Nick, she's got perfection. Judy, they think you might have achieved perfection. Let's find out how many are correct. <laughs> Congratulations, Judy, you have achieved perfection. <laughs> Well, Zach will be jumping up and down, very proud be, of you yeah. at the moment, really. Like, yeah. Nan's got two correct rounds in a row. Yeah. Let's go through them, shall we? Uh, there are 13 months at a leap year. Um, of course there aren't. That's uh, <laughs> false. I don't think we need to go into that in any more detail, do we? Norman Mailer founded the US Postal Service. True or false? Yeah, it is, in fact, false. He's a famous American writer. See the joke being about mail. Right, Mailer. that's what I thought, yeah. yeah, yeah. Trying to put me off, yeah. Yes, the golfer Ernie Els is nicknamed the Big Easy, and as you knew all too well, that is actually true. And uh, the film World War Z is based on a true story. <laughs> that was a total guess, I don't know. Do you know? It's a zombie movie. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I've never so, heard of it, I didn't so know. So that was what Phil yeah. was joking about. Uh, it is, of course, false, because it's a zombie movie and zombies don't exist. Or do they? Uh, Judy, as a result of that perfect performance, you've made winning that prize fund of £18,000 a lot easier. Let's see the final board, shall we? Well, you chose the first two categories because you won the first round. And guess what? Because you won round two, you get to choose the next two as well. Fire away. Right, well, I'll have first ladies. First ladies goes in. And film villains. And film villains. Tell you what, interesting, isn't it, usual suspects? She doesn't say much, but what she says seems to count at the moment. 
Yeah, I'm afraid so. Yeah, worrying, isn't it? All right, we'll see you in round three. Maybe you'll get a look in there. Well done by choosing your own categories. You're hopefully making the final a little well, easier hopefully. to win. Yeah. Ready to play the next round? Yeah. Let's play round three. <laughs> your 45 seconds starts now. Bob Hawke was the first Prime Minister of Australia. False. False. Zanzibar is located in the Indian Ocean. Oh, I'll say true for that one. True. Jessica Ennis won an Olympic medal in 2008. False. False. And finally, whatever was a UK top ten single for Oasis. Oh, not very hot on Oasis, really. Um... True. True. And with time yeah. to spare, you've answered all four. You spent a little time there thinking about it on that last one. And we had a rare insight into your thinking process there. You yes. gave us a bit more. You gave us a sentence. <laughs> so you're less confident with this one, are you? Yeah, not very confident with this one. All right. Well, before we find out exactly how well you've done, it's time for us to bring back the usual suspects. So these are the four statements, and next to them are Judy's answers. Catherine, is there a mistake here that you can seize upon? I think Judy's got perfection for the third time in a row. That's a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah. Phil, is the money in danger here? Has she got perfection again? Oh, yeah, I've got to agree. I'm a, and those are the answers I would go for, yeah. Michael, anything? Anything at all? I, I've got a sneaky feeling that Jessica Ennis may have picked up a, a medal in 2008. All right, Judy, it's the moment of truth. You need to have answered all four statements. I don't know what I'm telling you. You've done it twice. So um, <laughs> let's have a look, shall we, and see how many you've got right. Congratulations, Judy, you have achieved perfection again. Well, that's quite extraordinary. That's only the second time that's happened this series, and it doesn't happen very sure often of at, all. at all. Judy, as a result of that perfect performance, you've made winning the prize fund a lot easier. Let's take a look through those answers, shall we? Bob Hawke was the first Prime Minister of Australia. True or false? That's <laughs> false, actually. Sir Edmund Barton was the first one in 1901. Zanzibar is located in the Indian Ocean. You said that was true, and of course it is true. Uh, Jessica Ennis won an Olympic medal in 2008, and that is, of course, false. She was injured for most of that year, and so um, was yeah, never really yeah, in with the chance was. of a medal. Yeah. And whatever was a UK top 10 single for Oasis, and as you knew only too well, Judy, it's absolutely true. Uh, let's have a look at your final board, shall we? We're about to make it a clean sweep. You're going to make life a lot easier for yourself. You chose the first four because you won the first two rounds. You won round three now, so you get to choose yeah. the last two as well. All right, well, I'll try art. Art goes in. And poetry. And poetry. We now know our six final categories. They are animals, models, first ladies, film villains, art and poetry. Well, time to switch you off, your usual suspects. We'll see you a little later. So choosing your own category should give you the advantage. Oh, yeah, I'll pick the best of them. Yes. All right, well, look, Judy, for £18,000, it's time to play the final. <laughs> Judy, this is the all-important final. If you could achieve perfection, you could be leaving with a prize fund of £18,000. Eight, say it with me. Eighteen thousand pounds. That's a lot of money. That's scary. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. However, if you fail, you'll be leaving with nothing, which would, of course, be great news for the usual suspects, as one of them could be playing for a rollover of nineteen thousand pounds on the next game. Which, by the way, if that happens, that will be the highest amount that it's ever reached. Nineteen thousand pounds. We got there once before. Yes. You can stop that, that one. by winning it right now. Right. Let's play the final round. <laughs> Judy, here are your final six categories. You must answer all six statements correctly if you want to win the £18,000. Think carefully, there's no time limit, but once you've given an answer, your first answer, it will be locked in. Are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's reveal your first statement. Please tell me whether you believe it to be true or false. Animals. A dugong has eight legs. False. False. Models. David Bowie's model wife, Iman, was born in Somalia. I know that one, that's true. True. First ladies. Michelle Obama was in the US Navy. False. False. Film villains. The character Jaws 
appears in Goldeneye. True. True. Art. The Turner Prize can be won by artists of any age. No, I'll go false on that one. False. And finally, poetry. Don Juan is a satirical poem by Lord Byron. True. Say true for that one. True. And with that, you've answered all six statements and your answers are now locked in. Remember, if there's one single mistake, you leave with nothing. Which ones are you unsure of? Well, the F. Not really sure of E, just that I've never known anybody young winning it, so... Yeah, the others I'm not too bad on. Definitely no B. All right, then, let's bring back the usual suspects to see what they have <laughs> to say. So, usual suspects, you can now see the final six statements and next to them are Judy's answers. Judy, your answers are now locked in and you can't change them by yourself, but if you think you have made a mistake, you can unlock the board with the help of the usual suspects. This will, however, come at a cost. Usual suspects, I'm now going to ask you to tell me how well you think Judy has done, if you want to help, and if you do, how much it will cost. So, Judy, who would you like to hear from first? I'll hear from Michael. I don't think you've got perfection, but I'm not certain enough on a couple of the answers to help you out, I'm afraid. OK. Phil? To be honest, there's a few I'm not sure of. Um, I think you might have got a couple wrong. I don't really want to take the risk at this stage. This is my first game. Um, thank you. And we'll hear from Catherine. Judy, I know you've got one wrong there, and I want to come down and help you out. Um, I'll go halves with you. Well, so Catherine is saying that she thinks that you've got one wrong and wants £9,000 of your £18,000 to come down and help you. Well, there's a couple I'm not sure of. Um, how about 6000 No, Judy, I'll go halves with you. That's your final offer? Yeah. Oh, this is so difficult because... It can only be your decision. All right, we'll go halves on it. You're going halves? Yeah. OK, Catherine, for £9,000, for the £18,000, please come down and join us. <laughs> OK, Judy, you've asked Catherine for help. If you achieve perfection, it will cost you £9,000 or a potential prize fund of £18,000. Uh, Catherine, you've now forfeited your chance to play in the next game. This is your only shot at winning perfection. Have you made the right decision? I think we're about to find out. Here are the final round statements. All six answers are now unlocked. First question you have to ask always when somebody comes down to join in, were you bluffing about her being one wrong? Do you think she's got perfection? Is that what's going on? Or do you have something? I told you I was really confident that you'd got one wrong. I'm pretty sort of confident. Um, but you've done such a good job yeah. getting perfection in the other rounds. Which I couldn't miss this opportunity. E, I think an artist of any age yeah, could get the Turner Prize. So if you weren't sure about that one, I definitely think sure, we should so change, I'm happy e. To change E. Um, Don Juan, I don't really know about, do you? I just know he was a bit of a lad. So he might have written a satirical poem. <laughs> OK, well, let's go with your... Go let's with go true? with your gut. Let's yeah, go with true. It's my gut feeling on it. Um, yeah. Yeah, the Jaws one is right. David Bowie's wife is right. Yes. I've never heard of a dong Well, I, Dugong. Unless it's a, a spider, I can't see that. I've never heard of it. OK, Dugong. let's go false. I don't know about Michelle Obama. Never heard it. That's why I said false. OK. So, uh, listen, any changes you want to make? Well, I think we'll change the Turner Prize yeah. then. Yeah. Turn... Turn a prize false to true, please. OK, so E changes from false to true. Anything else? I just think we would have heard it if we, she was in the US Navy. Is that anyone I'm unsure about? Yeah, that's what I just think. Yeah. Should we keep that like it is? Let's such keep a famous it as false. Person, false. So... David Bowie's right and the Dugong. Yeah, so keep the rest the same, yeah? yeah? I think we okay, just change Judy, that. Let's go. go for it. Yes. Locking all the rest in? Yes, please. OK, all the other answers are yeah. now locked in. £18,000 at stake, £9,000 to Judy, £9,000 to Catherine, six answers away. Let's find out if you've achieved perfection. <laughs> right, well, I suppose the key one really is uh, the Turner Prize, because that's the one that you've changed. I'm always accused of leaving that one till last to try and build up the pressure. So maybe on this occasion, we should actually start with that one. And immediately, you can find out then uh, Judy, whether it was a good idea to bring Catherine down or not. So, the Turner Prize can be won by artists of any age. You said this was false. Catherine came down because she wanted to have a chat with you. She wasn't convinced of this, but she thought that maybe should be the one that you changed. You had to think about it and change it to true. We need this to turn green to get you off to a good start. The Turner Prize can be won by artists of any age. Is that true or false? It's false. 
say. <laughs> Never Sorry. Mind. Never mind. Well, that's a disaster, isn't it? Right at the beginning, it means that you can't win the money and you can't achieve perfection. Oh, let's hope we've got another one wrong. Yeah, gosh. <laughs> Maybe you can still achieve perfection at home, but the real worry here is whether she's come down and changed you away from a perfect board uh, or whether there is something else wrong. I'm guessing at this well, stage yeah. you're both hoping there's something else wrong. Well, I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK, so let me clear that up straight away. The Turner Prize can be won by artists of any age. Obviously, no, it can't. It can only be won by artists under 50, oh. in actual fact. Oh. Mm. Let's carry on, then. Don Juan is a satirical poem by Lord Byron. Uh, you thought this could be true, Judy. Catherine agreed, so it stayed true. We need this to turn green. Is it true or false? Yeah, it is true. So that would have been OK. Let's get back up to the top and start again. A dugong has eight legs. Now, you went with false. Catherine was happy to stick with that. Is it true or false? Yeah, it is false, in actual fact. It's a marine mammal with two yeah, four limbs. Yeah, I think of it now. I think can of think it now. Of it, yeah, like a sealy thing, isn't it? Yeah, that kind of thing, mm. yeah. Moving on. David Bowie's model wife, Iman, was born in Somalia. Now, you're both convinced that this is true, so we're expecting this to turn green and you to be right about this one as well. Is it true or false? It is true. Michelle Obama was in the US Navy. Now, you said this was false. You would have heard of it if it was... Well, yeah, I'm hoping it's true now. <laughs> I've just never heard that. Yeah, we're looking for another one to be wrong. All right, then. Well, let's find out. Is it true or false? It's false. Oh, no. She <laughs> was a mind. lawyer. Never mind. Just one more. How are you feeling at the moment, Catherine? I'm feeling terrible. Of course I am. All right, we've got our fingers crossed that you've got this one wrong as well. Then yes. at least you haven't ruined yeah. a perfect board. I'm hoping this for both of you. The character Jaws appeared in Golden Eye. Judy, you said this was true. Catherine, you agreed this was true. Unusually, we'd really like you to be wrong <laughs> and for this to be false <laughs> so that it isn't just the one that was changed by Catherine that's actually stopped you winning the money. The character Jaws appears in Golden Eye. Is that true or false? Please turn red. Oh. Yes, it is false. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the relief. <laughs> oh, poor girl. You were terrified, so weren't you? Geez. You were shaking there. Yeah, for I, thought I lost her £9,000. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I feel all right now. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Well, that's yes. Uh, so yeah. let me clear that up. The character Jaws appeared in Goldeneye. Of course, that's false. Uh, he was an enemy of Roger Moore in The Spy Who Loved Me and Moonraker. If you remember those, but not Goldeneye. So, well, what an interesting board that was in the end. Do you know what? I think, Zach, your He'll grandson... He'll be proud of me. Do you know what? Really proud yeah. of you. Three all-correct rounds yeah. and then four I'm out of well, To be that. fair, five yeah. out of six in the final. <laughs> I'm pleased with that. <laughs> and do you know what, Catherine? Don't be too tough on yourself. If you yeah. see an opportunity, you need yeah. to come down and have a go at it, otherwise you'd never get near the money. Great news for you, usual suspects. The prize fund rolls over to the next game, where one of you could be playing for a record equaling total of £19,000 on perfection. <laughs> Judy and Catherine, you failed to find perfection, uh, which means you go home with nothing yeah. other than our thanks for being such great Thank players. You. Let's hear it for Catherine and Judy, everybody. <laughs> now time to meet the next Usual Suspects, hoping to play perfection today. Usual Suspects, please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm James. I'm originally from Ipswich, but I'm currently studying politics in Bristol. Hi, I'm Kyle. I live in Manchester and I'm a territory manager for a medical device company. Welcome, James and Kyle. Unusually, an all-male list of usual suspects. And best of luck to all of you as we now find out which one of you has been randomly picked to play perfection. James, it's you. Please come down and join me. James, welcome to the game. Let's find out a bit more about you. So you're studying what is it at university? Uh, politics and actually international relations as well. So um, what, what sort of course. career are you looking at when you come out the other side of that? Not that it's always related. I'm thinking of a career maybe in the armed forces. Well, best of luck with that. So, uh, listen, James, it's now you versus the usual suspects. They were your teammates. But unlike the army, they've turned into your enemies. Yeah. Uh, here is the good news. Uh, as nobody has won the last 18 games, the prize fund currently stands at £19,000. <laughs> So, what are you going to spend it on when you win it? Well, um, it's my mum's 40th birthday this year, and uh, she's desperate to go to... Well, she's already been to Iceland, uh, but she wants to take the whole family to Iceland, and she also wants to go visit Norway. So that would be a bit of it. Um, 
the rest. Logically, I'm thinking we'll go to removing some of my student debt. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of that these days, isn't there? All yeah. right, look, best of luck. Three rounds of the final to come. Usual suspects, we're going to switch you off for now so you can't see or hear anything, but as soon as James makes a mistake, you'll be back in the game. James, you ready? Yeah, I think so. Then let's play perfection. <laughs> Round one, your 45 seconds starts now. Jim Carrey is over 50 years old. Oh, I know he's over 40. I don't think he's over 50. False. False. The Battle of Passchendaele was fought during World War II. I should know this. Um, doesn't strike. I'm going to say true. True. Kia is an alcoholic French drink. I've had a Kirsch. Um, I don't think Kia is false. Keep an eye on the time. False. false. And false. finally, Jim Robinson is the BBC's political editor. Uh, false. False. And with just a little time to spare, time creeps up on you a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. I know Jim Robinson... Well, I know there's a Robinson that does something to do with the politics, but I don't think he's the editor. I don't know. Jim Carrey, I know he's, he's been around for a long time. I don't think he's over 50, but then they strike, they jump out at you and turn out they're like 60, 70 years old, some of these <laughs> actors <laughs> that... <laughs> are well-preserved. Yeah, yeah. well-preserved. Right. Look, before we reveal exactly how well you've done, it's time for us to bring back the usual suspects. So here are the four statements, and next to them are James's answers. Uh, Michael, get us started here. Is that perfection? Not at all, no. Keir is an alcoholic French drink, and I'm pretty sure Jim Carrey is about 52, 53 years old, so he's got two wrong. Phil, what do you think? I actually think um, Jim Carrey is over 50 years old as well, and I've got a feeling that Battle of Passion Dar was World War I and not two. Kyle? Yeah, I agree with uh, the Jim Carrey one. I think he is just over 50, and I wasn't sure myself between World War I and World War II for, for B as well, so that could possibly be wrong. OK, James, the moment of truth. Let's find out how many are correct. Yeah, just one out of four, I'm afraid. Okay. Not perfection, certainly, and you let your enemies, the usual suspects, into the game. But don't worry yet, they have to find the three answers that they need to change to steal the round. Off you go, usual suspects, have a chat. Right, so we definitely change A and C? Yes. Well, so. A, B and, and C. B. I think so. And B. I mean, Jim Robinson was in Neighbours, so I'm sure I think that's pretty... F that's going to be false, isn't it? I think Nick Robinson, I think, is the BBC political editor. Oh, right, is he? Yeah. Oh, sorry, no, but you're sure. right. So, so it's false. So, so he's therefore, false. I think... So A, B and C, definitely? Yes. OK. Yep, yeah, we changing A, B and C, Michael? Yes, we play... Well, yes, yes, please. Thank you. A changes from false to true. B changes from true to false. C changes from false to true. And D remains as answered by James. Usual suspects, let's find out what the correct answers are. Jim Carrey is over 50 years old. True or false? True. Jim Carrey turned 52 in January 2014. Uh, the Battle of Passchendaele was fought during World War II. Is that true or false? It's false. James? Yes, World War One. <laughs> You're not actually thinking about this now. You're thinking about the stick you're going to get when you get back, are you? Anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thought so. OK, yeah. Kia is an alcoholic French drink. True or false? Yes, true. Black currant liqueur. And finally, Jim Robinson is the BBC's political editor. True or false? It's false. Congratulations, usual suspects. You have achieved perfection. <laughs> Let me clear that last one up. Nick Robinson became BBC political editor in 2005. Jim Robinson, Phil, as you said, was a character in Neighbours. So, James, they managed to succeed where you failed and they've stolen the round. Usual suspects, you now have the opportunity to make James's chances of winning the prize under the final a little bit harder. Let's have a look at the final board. James, these six blank spaces need to be filled with subject categories. Here are your final round category options, starting with British comedy, running through postage, scandal and on to travel with many more in between. Now, because the usual suspects stole the round from you, they get to choose the two categories, hoping to make the final harder for you. So which to, would you like him to play in the final, chaps? I'm thinking perhaps celebrity. I don't think mm. he would know much about that. And I think I it's something he could trip up on. North Smith and yeah, I was definitely North Smith thinking. and Chaucer. I was looking at yeah. more, but I don't North, know. Well, North, North Smith. I think his mum's been to Iceland before. Oh, and yes. He was in Norway. That's, that's why I'm thinking. Oh, might okay. know a bit about that. Yeah, um, fair enough. Nature. Nature. I'd be happy with nature. And Chaucer. Chaucer. Yeah. Chaucer. Chaucer. Yeah. Got them. So Chaucer. we'll have Nick. We'll have uh, nature. And Chaucer. Nature goes into the final. And Chaucer goes into the final. Well done, usual suspects. You've won the first round. Time to switch you off. We'll see you in round two. 
Nature? It's not too bad. Um, Chaucer? Chaucer, I did in primary school. Canterbury Tales, isn't there? That's Ch Chaucer, or maybe not. I, mean, I can't look tell you anything about it at um, this stage. Oh, yeah, Let's obviously. take a look at the list then, shall we? What will be the first two you choose from that list when you get an opportunity? Celebrity, I think, I'll be all right with. Um, British comedy, all right, box office. A couple that you're keen to avoid. Postage and North Smith, I'd like to avoid. Oh, that's, well, that's worked out quite well, because they yeah. talked about that and decided you'd yeah. know about that. Yeah, I've got no idea. Very good. Yeah. All right. Well, the only way's up from here, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. All okay. right, then. Let's play round two. <laughs> Your 45 seconds starts now. Eddie Irvin is a former Formula One world champion. Uh, false. False. Jane Austen was born in the 19th century. True. True. A romain is a type of potato. False. False. And finally, Andrew Scott plays Jim Moriarty in Sherlock. False. False. And with time to spare, you've answered all four. Would it be wrong of me to say that you looked a little uncomfortable during that round? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you can say that. My, um, my grandma loves Sherlock and is constantly trying to get us to watch it, but I haven't seen it. Just goes to show, doesn't it? You should always I listen know. to your grandma. Uh, she yeah. knows best. <laughs> All right, well, look, before we reveal how well you've done, it's time for us to bring back the usual suspects. So, usual suspects, these were the four statements, and next to them are James's answers. Michael, what do you think of these answers? I would have answered all the questions the same, so I think he may have perfection. Phil? Yeah, I think he's improved, but I've got a feeling, see, I think a Romain is a type of potato. Kyle, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I agree. I think C is a, a Romain is a type of potato. Um, also, D, I think Andrew Scott is in Sherlock. Whether he plays Moriarty or not, I'm not sure, but I think I would have said true for that one, so I think he's got two wrong there. OK, you guys big into fashion, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder whether you compared notes before deciding that you were all going to come on wearing check. <laughs> It's our uh, boys' own look. Right, oh, right. So I'll, maybe I need to go and get myself some check shirts. All right, uh, let's have a look, shall we? Uh, James, the moment of truth. Let's find out how many you got correct. Oh, come on. Two out of four, I'm afraid. Not perfection again. Better than last time, though. Yeah. It means the yeah. usual suspects are in the game with a chance to steal. You need to find the two that you need to change. But which two? Should we go with what we originally yeah, said? Yeah, I, I think, think so, so, yeah. Yeah, C and D. We'd like to change C and D, please. C changes from false to true, and D changes from false to true, leaving A and B as answered by James. All right, usual suspects, let's find out what the correct answers are. Eddie Irvin is a former Formula One world champion. Is that true or false? Yes, uh, it is false. He was runner-up in 1999. Jane Austen was born in the 19th century. True or false? False. Usual suspects. 1775, she was born. Tut tut, usual suspects. You had a chance to steal there and you failed to take mm -hmm. it. I wonder whether you can still achieve perfection at home. Let's deal with the rest of them, shall we? Uh, a romaine is a type of potato. True or false? False. It's a type of lettuce. And finally, Andrew Scott plays Jim Moriarty in Sherlock. True or false? Absolutely true. Well, usual suspects. You could have piled on the pressure there, uh, but you didn't. Let's take a look at the all-final board, shall we? There are still only two subject categories chosen. Nobody won round two, so what do we do with those categories that were due to be chosen? Well, they get carried over into the next round. So round three will be a good one to win because all four categories left will be available in that round. So, usual suspects, Mr. Chance there. Uh, we'll see you in round three. And away they go. All right, you ready to play on? I am, yeah. So let's play round three. Your 45 seconds start now. Rick Astley has represented the UK at Eurovision. I'm going to say false. False. Alicia Usmanov is a German businessman. I'm going to say false again. False. Central Park is in Manhattan. <laughs> no, it's New York. Uh, and I, yeah, true. True. And finally, Andy Murray serves at over 200 miles an hour. False, that can't be... Uh, that can't happen. False. False. Yeah. That was really interesting. Can't happen, can't happen. Yeah. 
Can yeah. it happen? <laughs> 200 miles an hour, that's fast. <laughs> that is that is very fast. Yeah. 200 miles an hour is fast. But that sounded like a better round, though. I think it was better. And obviously, Rick Astley's extremely famous, but... Uh, see, now I'm starting to worry about that one. Yeah, probably best not to think about yeah. it. Yeah, I don't know. I think... Yeah, I might have done all right. I might have done all right. <laughs> you talk yourself into it, finally. <laughs> yeah. All right, before we reveal how well you've done, let's bring back the usual suspects. So here are the four statements, and next to them are James's answers. Carl, you can start us this time. Is that perfection? Uh, I think he may well have perfection this round, Nick. Um, the only one I'm slightly unsure about is B, but I think he may he might perfection. Phil, what do you think? Pretty much the same here, to be honest. There's nothing really jumping out that I'd change. Michael? I think A might be wrong, because I've got a sneaky feeling in the back of my head that Rick Ashley did do the uh, Eurovision and came last. Right. James, the moment of truth. You need to have answered all four statements perfectly to have won the round. Let's find out how many are correct. Congratulations, James. You've achieved perfection. A little bit competitive? Yeah, mate. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. You kept that down all the way through. Yeah. Obviously well, very it's <laughs> suddenly release it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's have a look at those answers in more detail. Rick Astley has represented the UK at Eurovision. True or false? Uh, yeah, false. He hasn't. Uh, Alicia Usmanov is a German businessman. True or false? Yeah, that's false. He's an Uzbeki-born Russian businessman, co-owner of okay. Arsenal. Oh, wow. Uh, didn't yeah. know that. I should have known that, shouldn't I? Yeah, Football well. fan. Uh, Central Park is in Manhattan. True or false? True, and finally, Andy Murray serves over 200 miles an hour. False. The fastest serve ever recorded was approximately 163 That's miles an hour. That's still flipping good, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Really. Well, well done, James. As a result of that perfect performance, you've made winning the prize fund a little bit easier. Let's have a look at your final board. In fact, you made it a lot easier because, of course, no two categories were chosen in round two. They were carried over to this round, so you get to choose the last four categories on your final board. So, choose away. I'll go for countries. Countries goes in? Um, box office. Box office? British comedy. British comedy? And I'll go for celebrity. And celebrity? OK, we now know our six final categories. They are nature, Chaucer, countries, box office, British comedy and celebrity. Time to switch off the usual suspects for the last time. Well, you've chosen four out of the six. It's looking very good. Isn't it? It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's looking great, yeah. James, for £19,000, it's time to play the final. <laughs> James, this is the all-important final. If you can achieve perfection, you could be leaving with a prize fund of £19,000. If you fail, you'll be leaving with nothing, which would be great news for the usual suspects, as one of them could be playing for a rollover of £20,000 on the next game. That would be an all-time record. Let's play the final round. James, here are your final six categories. You must answer all six statements correctly if you want to win the £19,000. Think carefully, there's no time limit, but once you've given an answer, your first answer is locked in. Are you ready? I am, yeah. OK, let's reveal your first statement. Please tell me whether you believe it to be true or false. Nature. The marmot is a type of squirrel. Doesn't jump out as a type of squirrel. I'm going to say false. False. Chaucer. Robin Hood is a character in the Canterbury Tales. It was set way... Oh, was it? Oh, see, I think things through. Um, no, cos I did, I did the Canterbury Tales and there's no way Robin Hood is in it, so false. Yeah. False. Countries. By area, Germany is larger than Mexico. And Mexico does get quite thin. I'm going to say true. True. Box office. Iron Man 3 has grossed over $1 billion worldwide. I'm pretty sure that the Avengers series, like including Iron, all the Iron Mans, Captain America, they all have. But like Iron Man 3 on its own, I don't think so. So I'm going to say false. False. British comedy. In Absolutely Fabulous, Patsy's surname is Monsoon. I don't know what Absolutely Fabulous is. Um, uh, <laughs> um, that's what scene doesn't. I haven't heard that. I'm going to say false. False. I'm say false. Celebrity. Jennifer Lopez is the mother of twins. 
Nah, false. I false? Don't, don't think that's true. And with that, all six answers are locked in. Remember, if there's a single mistake, you leave with nothing. Which ones are you unsure of? E, definitely, 100%. It's E and A that I'm not too confident with. E and A are the worries. All right, let's bring back the usual suspects and see what they have to say. Usual suspects, you can now see the final six statements, and next to them are James's answers. James, your answers are locked in and you can't change them by yourself, but if you think you've made a mistake, you can unlock the board with the help of the usual suspects. This will, however, come at a cost. James, who would you like to hear from first? I'll go left to right. I'll have a chat to Kyle first. Um, you've definitely got two wrong there. I'm going to have to say I'm sorry, James. There's just there's two that I know you've got wrong, but there's a couple that I'm just really not sure of, and I think the risk is a bit too big for me to come down, so... I'm afraid I'm... OK. I'm Phil? There's a couple of them that I'm unsure of, to be honest, um, so I think I'm going to have to rule myself out. All right, Phil's out of the equation. Michael? Uh, yeah, um, I have to second what he just said. I, I'm uncertain on more than two of them, so I have to rule myself out. So, negotiations appear to be over. James, none of the usual suspects are willing to help you, so you're on your own. £19,000 at stake, yeah. six answers away. Let's find out if you've achieved perfection. <laughs> Top to bottom or bottom to top? I'll let you decide. For suspense, I think I'll go top to bottom, unless I've got the top one wrong. All right. A marmot is a type of squirrel. You said this was false. We want this to turn red for you to get you off to a good start. Is this true or false? It's true, I'm afraid. So, as suspense goes... It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Uh, not good, I'm afraid. That's really bad news for you, I'm afraid, yeah, there, James. Bad. It means you can't achieve perfection and you won't be taking home the £19,000. I wonder whether you can still achieve perfection at home. Let's have a look through these, shall we? Uh, Robin Hood is a character in the Canterbury Tales. You said false. Is that true or false? Yeah, it is false. Very well done there. By area, Germany is larger than Mexico. True or false? False, in actual fact. Mexico is, in fact, over five times larger no than Germany. Yeah? Wow. Moving on, Iron Man 3 has grossed over $1 billion worldwide. You said this was false. True or false? True, I'm afraid. Wow. Yeah, very successful film. OK, yeah, absolutely fabulous. Patsy's surname is Monsoon. You said this was false. Is it true or false? It is false. Very well done. Great guess. <laughs> Eddie's surname in Absolutely Fabulous is Monsoon. Patsy's is Stone. So we're down to Jennifer Lopez is the mother of twins. You thought that wasn't the case, so you said false. True or false? Yeah, it is true, I'm afraid. So in the end, just the two out of the yeah, six on that board. Tough board. Bad news for you, but great news for the usual suspects. As the prize fund rolls over to the next game, where one of you could be playing for a grand total of, and this is a record on perfection, £20,000. <laughs> James, I'm afraid it means you failed to achieve perfection and you go home with nothing other than our thanks for playing. How was it as an experience? Yeah, it was really good fun. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's a shame I did so badly. Well, I got perfection, but it's a shame I did yeah, so did badly in that final game. Take that game. with you. Yeah, let's hear it for James, everybody. <laughs> well, that's all we have time for. Please join us again next time when our usual suspects have the chance to play again. This time for a record-breaking £20,000 on perfection. But remember, it's a tough one to win, and we will only pay for perfection. Goodbye. <laughs>